The Fujifilm X100F. Uh, if you look at YouTube or wherever, um, I, you know, all you can see are endless videos of people praising uh, what a great camera this is. Now, I've always had a curiosity for this camera um, or cameras like it because uh, street photography is what got me started in photography. You know, although I've kind of strayed away from that for a while, uh, it is something that I'm trying to uh, get back into. I've had this camera, I've had the Ricoh GR2, um, the X70 and cameras like that in my shopping cart and Adorama or Amazon or wherever I shop, it, you know, ready to hit that buy it now button. I've watched so many different comparison videos of all these cameras, but I've always held off on buying it just because I always felt that my X-T2 and my uh, 23 F2 lens are effectively the same thing, aside from size, of course, um, but it's, it's given me the same focal length the same effect and so I've kind of held off on doing that however there is a size difference so uh, I decided uh, that smaller is better <laughs> especially if you're trying to do street photography where you want something to carry with you all the time or just for personal use as well you know date night uh, family time that kind of thing where photography isn't the main reason for being there uh, but being a photography enthusiast you can't help but want to photograph everything so you want to bring a camera and this is definitely easier to work with than something like that now my initial impressions when I got this camera when I first unboxed it were very good it felt good in the hand I could see what people were you know what all the hype was about um, and that's why I why I finally uh, got it as well um, for this year for this 2019 I decided that I really want to get back into street photography and start bringing camera with me a lot more often just all the time if I if, if possible and that's what got me to get it uh, what better way to start the new year uh, than with a new camera so <laughs> there you go so this isn't meant to be a review in any way this is just more of a first impressions uh, first thoughts uh, I'm kind of sharing my first shooting experience with it showing you some images I will be showing you some images shortly but it's not meant to be a review. You know, there are people who do, I will follow up with kind of, once I use it more with uh, more thoughts on it. Uh, but you know, there, if you're looking for the scientific, you know, corner sharpness tests and dynamic range and all that, I, I don't do that. There are people who do that very well on YouTube and I, I'm not one of them. I'm just gonna give you my personal experience using it and how I think it works with the way I like to shoot. So the initial impressions with this camera were so good that the very next day, I wanted to go out and shoot um, even though the temperatures were dropping and there was an, uh, a, a snowstorm coming and I still can't find my other photography glove these are uh, gloves gloves that I bought that you know they're supposed to be for photography just because they've got these kind of thing where your fingers can poke out and you can use your camera but of course not only am I missing one, I'm missing the one that I need, which is for the right hand. This doesn't do me any good. Um, but I went out anyways, and I used these gloves, which are fine if it's above freezing. So they were good for a while, but the, <laughs> it did get colder out there and I just started getting colder. Um, but luckily, the size of this um, meant I could put it in my coat pocket. When I wasn't, you know, when there wasn't much going on, I could do that uh, because I didn't have a strap on it. It does come with a strap, of course. I didn't have a strap on it just because when I do, do street photography, I don't like neck straps. Um, I do have a black rapid sling that goes underneath and is, you know, you can raise it up and it's just a lot more flexible. Um, but one of the things I don't like about that strap is that it, the way it, it just, it ends up chipping off the paint on cameras on these edges and this is kind of on a trial basis and I don't want to ruin the camera if I need if I need to return it although I guess this is kind of a spoiler alert but I, 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 I highly doubt I'll be returning this after my first experience so with you know with with neck straps the thing is is that your camera is like this I'm sorry if the mic is making noise um, and I feel like for street photography, it just kind of limits. Now for vacation, travel, personal, that kind of stuff, and yes, neck strap is great. But for street photography specifically, um, 
I just don't like the way it restricts uh, my movement. So I will probably end up getting a wrist strap uh, is probably how I'll end up using it uh, because it's the, the grip is on the bit on the, it is on the small side. And I find that the longer I hold it, the smaller the grip seems to you know get, if that makes any sense. And I can definitely see why people get that little thumb piece that attaches here to the hot shoe where you can rest your thumb. Because I did find kind of an awkward, a little bit of an awkwardness of where to put my thumb where it feels natural. Again, if that makes sense. So I can see why they do that. A wrist strap would definitely go a long way. Again, especially with these gloves that I, I wear when it's cold, uh, you know, it, the, it is a little slippery on this kind of material, on the material that it's made out of. It's not a bad material. I'm just saying for these sorts of gloves, it is a little bit slippery. So a wrist strap is definitely uh, what I will have to do. So, like I said, 2019, I want to get back out of the streets doing street photography. Um, so I finally pushed myself to get the X100F. Um, so the pictures I'm about to share are pretty much uh, street photography slash urban scenes. They're not straight street photography. So I know a lot of people get uptight about, hey, that's not street photography. I know it's, I know it's all not, but that's okay. Um, I think I did okay, um, considering that, uh, that I haven't been going out regularly. I was also going to use a, do a GoPro type thing uh, but I decided not to for two reasons is that the thing that I have that attaches to the camera is not very stable. So I feel like it's always falling out of place at the, at the slightest bumps. It just, no matter how much I tighten it, and it's probably cause it cost me like three ninety nine. Um, I'm sure that's why. And it's always falling out of place Two, I'm still learning the camera. It's new to me. It's familiar because it's Fuji, but it's still new to me and I didn't want any frustrations between this and the camera and the constant worrying about how the video is looking to interfere with the first impressions experience uh, and, and just how, how the camera feels to me. And so I decided to just scrap that and maybe try it for another video. I'm sure I'll have a follow-up video after a couple of weeks or months of, of using the camera. Um, anyways, enough about that. Here are those pictures. Overall, I think I had a pretty decent day out, uh, considering I haven't been out, considering it's a new camera. Uh, and maybe it's just I was in the good head. I was in a good headspace. Uh, I was pumped about getting out there. Um, I had my music on, and I was just kind of really feeling the energy of the whole street photography mentality. So, but the camera. Um, now I've heard people complain about the ISO dial or the way you select ISO. Um, I can see what they mean, but personally me, I just set it to auto ISO and I have the exposure compensation uh, wheel to deal with that. Uh, and so for this purpose, it's not an issue. If this was my main shooter, like on the X-T3, I'm glad it has a, a easier to use ISO dial. Uh, so, but to me, that per I just didn't find that to be an issue. Um, now 23 millimeters is my one of my favorite general walkabout 
focal length. I, uh, I did a review on the 23 f2 prime lens. Um, I'll leave a link below in case you guys want to check that out. Um, but in any case, so I was very comfortable with this right away. I didn't have, now I have been shooting for a while now with the 35 1.4 on the X-T3. Uh, that's been my street for camera for a while, uh, my street setup for a while. Um, so I did, I did kind of have to remind myself that I needed to move in a little bit closer. So there was a little bit of an adjustment period for that, uh, but that, that didn't take long at all. In my opinion, 35 millimeter full frame equivalent focal length is the best for street photography or wider even, um, you know, wide angle, ultra wide angle. To me, those are the ones that really uh, kind of um, just do something special to street photography images. Now, overall, I did like it. I did really enjoy the experience. I can, I can, I look forward to taking the camera out a lot more. There were some things that, you know, I, I wasn't too, you know, I, I think could use improvement. Uh, for one is the way you select the uh, aperture. It's fine, you know, it's, it's, but I just feel like, especially when you're at F2, the positioning of the, you know, little knobs, I guess you could call them, um, there seems like it should have, they should have had four so that at any place that this is the way I'm holding the camera and at F2, the, the two knobs are here. So it's, you have to, there's, it's just an awkward way to, I don't know. Am I making sense? My hand naturally rests here, but at F2, the knobs are here. So I'd have to do this or, I mean, like how, so it's just a little bit of awkwardness. So you have to kind of, yeah, you do have to put your hand at an awkward position if you suddenly want to change the aperture. If it's a slow shooting experience with the family, and it's not a big deal, but if it's something where you quickly want to change it, then yeah, it is a bit of an odd position. Um, the fact that it's not at its price point, that it's not weather resistant in any way, in any way um, is a, something that I'm not crazy about. Uh, I would have to say those are the two biggest things. Other than that, um, I, I am used to shooting with the XC3 or the XC2, so it does have that the screen that you can flip up, and so you can. E it's easier to do this, kind of shoot from the hip. Um, now I am familiar familiar enough with the 23 millimeter f2 that I can. I already know where to shoot, and I guess that's where experience kind of trumps um, uh, features such as the flip screen or whatever. Uh, but it's still, it would be easier um, to know exactly. Because sometimes you think you got it, or in the in the in the moment, in the heat of the moment, you do it, but you you're like way lopsided, and you don't realize um, that you're completely off, and all of a sudden the image uh, isn't any good. But I really enjoyed shooting with it. Uh, that's all I'm gonna say for now, because I only have one day out with it, so I, I don't. Again, I can't make a full review based on one day out. Um, but I am going to continue using it and continue to evaluate it. And I will definitely get back to you guys on any more thoughts I have on it. The other setup, this is going to be for a future video, but that I'm interested to use out in the streets is the 16 millimeter uh, 1.4 lens. Uh, this is kind of uncharted territories, I guess you could say for me, because uh, I usually don't shoot this. I've never owned a 24 uh, millimeter equivalent full frame equivalent lens being this one being a 16 millimeter. Um, but again, I've, I just hear so much good things about this lens that I just needed to try it out for myself. Um, and especially for street photography, uh, it's I'm becoming a bigger and bigger fan. I think as I become more comfortable with it, the more the closer I want to get. When I first started, I was doing 50 millimeter, you know, full frame equivalents just because of the space and you feel a little safer from far away. It's, it's just a lot easier to play off, uh, you know, shooting somebody at 50 mil. If they look at you and they look a little bit upset, it's just kind of easier to pretend you are shooting something else as, as opposed to a, a 24 mil or a 16 mil. Um, you really have to be in their face and then there's very little confusion about what you were doing. Uh, but the good thing is, is that it, hip shooting is easier because you can kind of, I've done it with, with my, um, I have a Panasonic, um, 8 to 18, which is the uh, full frame equivalent of 16 to 35. And so you, you can get all up in people's faces and just kind of hit, shoot from the hip. And, you know, by the time they realize you, you already walked past them because that's how close you have to be to, uh, to shoot. And zone, zone focusing is a lot easier to do uh, the wider you get. Uh, so I am looking forward 
to try this lens out. So look forward to that in the future, uh, a future video if you guys are uh, interested. Anyways, that's it for this video. The X100F, I'm um, so far happy with it. It's only been a day. Uh, I'm gonna continue to shoot with it. And hopefully I can come back and give more positive. I can, I can only imagine more positive coming out of this based on that first experience. For my intended use, I think it's, it's, it's working out very well so far. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're not and hit the like button if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next time.